hello ladies and gentlemen uh, you know sometimes I do these uh, little vlogs and th this one's gonna touch a little on some current events uh, stuff you guys probably already know about but this is just me kind of voicing my opinion on the whole deal um, as many of you know there was an attack in Libya where uh, Ambassador Christopher Stevens was uh, killed him and I believe five others um, I didn't really read all the details about it because I found out about this at work and I had other things to do, and, you know, I didn't have time to go through the whole article. Plus, I'm not really going into the whole deep-end fact. This is just me mentioning this because I feel it's important. But, uh, yeah, Christopher Stevens, uh, unfortunately, died in the uh, attack. I believe he suffocated when the uh, building he was in caught fire, and this was all condoned and coordinated by a group of radical Islamic people, which has, of course, caused... Uh, people all over the world to kind of go, you know, Islam is Satanist religion, yada, 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 when even I acknowledge, and I know a lot of more people acknowledge it than they don't, and that is that not everybody in the Middle East is, you know, a bunch of homicidal maniacs. The majority of them are, you know, good, decent people that are just trying to, you know, live their lives in the world, but there are these uh, group of people that, you know, are uh, giving them a bad reputation and all this other, um, you know, just complete and utter uh, chaotic uh, it, it's a mess I mean I don't even know the words to really describe these people because of my like distaste for this kind of behavior from anyone and you know I don't I even I know that not all terrorists are Middle Eastern there's South American terrorists there's even terrorists living in the United States that are Caucasian and you know it, it, there is no way to really categorize this kind of a person because it can be anyone it really can you cannot classify or stereotype a rapist or murderer because it can be anybody um christopher stevens from what i know was uh um i guess really you know in interacting with the people that he was speaking with the libyan people he didn't just associate with the top elites he actually interacted with the people of libya he even you know learned the language there so uh, with that being said, I'm like I said, I'm not going to go deep into this. I'm not going to spend you know ten minutes talking about Christopher Stevens, Libya, or all the you know craziness that goes on in the Middle East. But hey, um, thoughts and prayers with the family. Um, it's a tragic loss, and hey, for once, you know, a politician is a hero. This guy did a lot of good, from what I read about him. He's an upstanding citizen and one of the few politicians I legitimately show respect for. So. Um, as the picture says, rest in peace, uh, Ambassador Christopher Stevens. Um, in addition to that, Obama was criticized for his, uh, I guess, uh, not showing much of a backbone. Um, I, I'm going to abstain from voicing any major opinions on it because in terms of the political shenanigans going on right now, the joke that is this election, it's to, to me it just shows American politics at its worst. Um I do not feel that Obama has completely failed the nation. I think he's produced mixed results. People were hoping for more, but they didn't get what they wanted. And, you know, when you hope for too much, you're prone to disappointment, and that's where all this animosity towards him come, uh, comes from. Um, but again, I, going too deep, I think it's a little harsh to criticize Obama this way, and I think it should be reserved for a later time, considering the circumstances regarding the whole deal like you know um, the american people like you know your average joe your average jane they should be able to say what they want it's america it's a free country say what you want voice your opinion but i believe the people in charge need to understand when it's a time to show decencies and when it's a time to give criticism i think there is no proper way to handle a situation like this because this isn't the kind of thing you expect but at the same time Leaders need to know how to react to emergency situations. Obama needs to know when to, you know, stand up, be the guy that we look up to. But, I, again, I don't think he did anything bad. I don't think he responded the wrong way. Uh, I think what he should do is uh, work with the Libyan government, work with the uh, Libyan people, because even they feel that this attack was horrific, and it, it, show, it gives them a bad image and they acknowledge it and they're saying this is not us this is not what we stand for what was done we condemn it we are you know we're sorry that this happened to you we love this guy we love christopher stevens he was a good man and all this other um you know just respectful showing so hey salute to the living people for uh being the way they are you know it shows that that country really has changed since gaddafi got overthrown you know they they love us for what we did and you know unlike iraq 
which I won't get into detail with, unlike Iraq, this country wanted to be liberated, they wanted to be free, and they seem to have um, accepted us a little bit better than some other countries have, but um, not, you know, jumping too deep into the political thing. I want to stay away from politics because I don't want to offend anyone. Um, I guess I'll just sum this up right quick, is that uh, what uh, people like Romney's team have said, it, it offends me, but at the same time, I do understand that there is a time to criticize, but it should have waited until, you know, until the peop the uh, people closest to the ambassador have kind of had their moment to um, get over this. Instead, it's become a political uh, just um, bombardment between the two parties going at each other. So in saying that, I don't blame Romney because it wasn't his words specifically that were said. It was his team that kind of said it. But at the same time, he didn't, he didn't really uh, stop it. He didn't really say, hey, guys, you know, let's take a moment. Let's, you know, let, let, let's wait a bit before we start pointing fingers and saying, oh, you should have done this. Oh, you should have done that. Um, but at the same time, I do agree that Obama needs to take a firm stand and let the world know that you can't just kill United States government officials and get away with it without repercussions, without retaliation, because this kind of thing does deserve a reaction that would make a uh, hard statement, you know, when you decide to mess with the uh, United States government or when you decide to mess with anyone that the United States considers a friend or an ally. But uh, going off on the political stuff and, you know, getting away from all that, um, if any of these statements have offended you, if anything I have just said it has offended you, um, please keep it to a private message. Send it directly to me. Don't leave it on a comment because I will delete it as soon as po I will delete it. Delete it as soon as I see it because I do not tolerate the mentality of YouTube users. Now I'm not insulting the entire YouTube community, but YouTube does have a pretty notorious uh, resume. That's not the right word, but that's the only word that comes to mind. Um, of people that just don't know when to keep their mouths shut because they feel it's the internet and they can say whatever they want. So um, I haven't had any problems so far with any of my videos. Most of you have just been praising me, giving me suggestions, saying, hey, let's go head-to-head -head at this game. And I'll admit I'm a coward because <laughs> you guys see me play. I don't know how you guys play, so I'm like, uh, I don't want to get my ass kicked. But, you know, um, as soon as I get a better running computer with um, some better internet, um, if you live in Alaska, you know what I'm talking about. GCI's internet sucks. It's terrible. And the alternatives are no better. In fact, they're worse. But um, anyway, going off on that, uh, oops, didn't want to talk about that, but that's the main topic, Resident Evil Retribution. Um, I used to be a really, really big uh, wrestling fan. And yes, I know it's fake and it's scripted and none of it's real. But I never looked at it as like a sport. Like, I don't see it the same way I see UFC or boxing. I see it as like um, a soap opera that just happens to be about wrestling. That's, that's how you're supposed to look at it. It's not sports. It's sports entertainment. It's meant to entertain you. It's not meant to give you this, oh, I, you know, I think this guy's going to win or stuff like that. Yes, it's scripted. But anyways, uh, getting on topic, uh, Jerry Lawler has been one of my favorite commentators on the uh, WWE programming. And on the Raw of the, was it the 10th? Yeah, you might see my little calendar pop up. Uh, yeah, it was the 10th. He um, suffered a heart attack, and this was while they were broadcasting. But as, as, uh, from what I read, he's you know in stable condition. He's good. He's all right, and all this other stuff. But um, you really gotta you you gotta give it to these guys for keeping pretty much a. Uh, it, it was kind of a, a forced, but it was a straight face as they kind of went on with the show. Although a lot of people said they were having Owen Hart flashbacks because they felt it was um, it was a little awkward, a little. Uh, perhaps disrespectful to go on with the show. You know, after Owen Hart died, they just went on with the show, but they, you know, kind of kept in mind that, oh, hey, you know, one of our colleagues here just died in a horrific accident. And, you know, the same thing almost happened right here where, you know, Jerry Lawler, he, you know, Pat, he had a heart attack, and, you know, this is why they were going with the show. Uh, me personally, I don't think they made a bad call because, you know, he's all right and everything. And, well, I guess it can go either way. I guess it just depends on whose perspective you're looking at it from. But um, I just wanted to touch up on this because I, I'm, I, I was big into wrestling. Uh, I kind of lost 
touch with it when John Cena started becoming really big and really popular because I was like, okay, the show just revolves around him. Nobody else really matters. Okay, I'm tuning out. But uh, I'm starting to get back into it because um, I flew back uh, to where I'm from to visit some family and stuff, and I found my like old wrestling games for the 360. I was like, oh, hey, you know, I'll play these. I started playing, and I'm like, wow, I really miss this. So I started playing it again, and then I started like looking at how, everything that had happened that I had missed, and it looks like um, I've actually missed some good stuff. Um, not not as good as when I was younger because I don't think they, they've gone to this kind of like TV PG type deal. They're going to the family friendly audience, but that's just because the demographics of their uh, viewers changed from like you know the the people that wanted to see like blood and they wanted all the sexual innuendos and all that other stuff. And there's still sexual innuendos, but it's more of a family friendly show. Like you know, it's kind of like the kids won't get it, but we adults will. Or, your, you know, your teenagers will get it and stuff like that. But um, uh, I don't have cable where I'm at right now because I believe the cable company here is a ripoff. But I was thinking about getting back into it, and that's also because of the Internet bill that they bill me is freaking expensive. So, um, anyway, going off of that, um, I, you know, as some of you know, and if you, like, look through my channel, you'll see in my vlogs that I, like, did a few movie reviews and then... Um, if any, if any of you are friends with me on Facebook with my personal account, which um, you, you know that I used to type up like these little articles or on uh, the uh, Facebook notes that's, you know, it was like movie reviews. And, you know, that's kind of how I got started with that. And funny enough, the first one I did was Twilight uh, New Moon. And looking back on it, I felt like I wasn't harsh enough on it because that movie was bad. Um, I wanted to kind of not have the Twilight Twitards come after me because I have a few friends that are... You know, without naming names, I do have a few personal friends that are really big into Twilight and all that stuff, but most of them aren't, like, you know, getting tattoos and are just like, oh, my God, you insulted Twilight, I'm going to strangle you, and all that stuff. But uh, I'm going to start getting back into that, and the first one I'm actually going to, like, review legitimately is this movie here because I feel like this one is either going to be the best Resident Evil since the first one or it is going to be the absolute worst because... Okay, Mila Jovovich isn't superhuman anymore, at least according to the uh, premise. You know, when, uh, I guess, Wesker, like, took the virus out of her, made it inactive in her body, so she's not, like, psychic and all that crap anymore. Which, hey, I feel like it's a plus, but it's still turned into, like, a superhero. It's a dark superhero, but it's still Alice as a superhero. You could pretty much throw her into the Avengers, but, uh, you know, if that happened, I would be like, well, why are we doing this? Why are we putting her in there when we have, you know, Black Widow, who's ten times more badass anyway? Um, but, uh, the thing that really drew me to say that this one's gonna be the worst is because they're bringing back people that they killed in the older movies, such as the, uh, um, Michelle Rodriguez's character, that, uh, black dude that was kind of, he, he looked like he was gonna be, you know, maybe the the guy that would go out a hero, but he dies in the beginning, which I thought was kind of weird, and not in a good way. I thought it was kind of stupid because, you know, I'm like, they could have done something with this guy. Instead, they kept all the other um, blank characters around and then killed them off at the end when they could have kept the captain alive for a while. But And then they also bring back Carlos, who I felt like, eh, you know, I, I was a bit upset that Carlos died, but I'm like, eh, the way they went with it. Okay, I'll roll with it, because he, he, he died a hero, which is good enough for me, and Carlos wasn't, like, one of the biggest characters in Resident Evil. He was only in one game, um, with an honorable mention in uh, the, I think it was the Umbrella Chronicles? Or was it Dark Side? No, it was Umbrella. Yeah, it was the first one. Um, you know, he was in that one for a bit, for the Resident Evil 3 segment of it, but... The way they're bringing these people back is, for whatever reason, Wesker has decided to clone these people. And not just clone them once, he's cloned them twice. So there's a good version of these guys, and then there's a bad version of these guys. And, I, you know, I, I had me scratching my head like, what? <laughs> you know, like, uh, why are we doing this? Uh, why, why are we bringing back all these characters when there's really no reason to? Especially when you're introducing uh, Barry, Leon, Ada, and then they're keeping in the Luther West character. I forgot his name. But, um, and then for, you know, the thing that really bothers me is that they write off characters and their excuse for them not being there is, oh, um, Umbrella captured them. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've hated damn near, actually, I've hated all of the Resident Evil movies except for the first one because they felt like B-horror movies, or at least the second one felt like a B-horror movie, and the rest of them after that just felt like a cheap cash-in. 
for like, oh, let's see what we can do with CGI. Let's see what monsters we can include. Because if you look at Afterlife, they uh, put in the guy with the big axe, the uh, executioner from Resident Evil 5. Why? What was that thing doing in a big city like Los Angeles? That thing was so out of place. Even in Resident Evil 5, I felt like it was out of place because I don't understand the concept of the executioner. That a, 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 a monster like that, a, 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 a monster, you know, I'm stuttering. Apparently I'm Porky Pig now. But anyway, a monster like that could fit in uh, like Silent Hill. That looked like a monster you would see in Silent Hill or even Devil May Cry. I could see that thing fitting in with Devil May Cry, but I won't get into the Devil May Cry um, but again, it's, and to make things worse, they've not only re-added that monster into this one, they've added two of them. That's right, there are two executioners now, so apparently this is a original B.O.W. made by yours truly umbrella. So, I, and then Wesker's character is the, um, he's not the, you know, kind of rogue badass that just wants to fuck shit up that he was in Code Veronica. I won't say that that's what he was in 5, because in Resident Evil 5, he was a James Bond villain. Um, I, I, I don't care what, I don't care how, if you're a fanboy of Wesker like me or not. I hated Wesker in that game. I thought he belonged in a James Bond or a Mission Impossible movie. Um, the Wesker in this one has no personality. Um, he's not clever. He's not, you know, he's, yeah, he's not that clever, sly, manipulative guy that he was in, uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica, where he's kind of, uh, you know, he's behind the scenes. He's trying to, you know, take out Chris. He's trying to capture Alexi and all that stuff. This one's just not capturing. Wesker's just a, a, a guy just there. That's all he is. He may as well just be part of the background because he has done nothing to really be a bad guy. Like, I don't have a reason to hate him other than, oh, he just wants power. That's it. Um, other than, yeah, okay, he's the chairman of Umbrella. Okay, but he didn't directly do anything. It's not him doing stuff. It's just the company itself is supposed to be the bad guy. That's how it was in Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3. Umbrella was an entity. You didn't know much about it other than it developed the virus. You didn't know specifics about the, uh, the, the hierarchy of it, the members of it. And we didn't learn much about it until I think the later games, like Resident Evil 5 pretty much gave you the whole umbrella Umbrellica? Whoa. Umbrella Chronicles, because it told you about Oswell, it told you about Marcus, and then you, you had Resident Evil Zero, which elaborated even more into the uh, Marcus bit where Birkin and Wesker were sent to kill him. But, you know, the movies have kind of become their own general franchise. Like, they're kind of separate from the actual games. And they are separate in their own way in that it's turned from horror flick to cheap-ass CGI-infested... Uh, action movie. There's no horror elements to it. It's it's like Resident Evil 5 the movie, or rather Resident Evil 5 the freaking trilogy, because that's what it's become. And how many times has Mila Jovovich's character been captured by Umbrella? Like four times now? And then you have Kmart, Chris, and Claire, who are not appearing in this movie because they've been captured by Umbrella, when you could have included those three and kind of not, or, you know, not brought back Carlos, that captain, and Michelle Rodriguez. You could have done that. That's what I would have preferred. I don't care to see these people that died like five movies ago. I want to see the people that are still alive. I want to see what they're up to and what they're still doing. And these guys, I mean, they might get a cameo or Alice might mention, where are they? You know, I'm trying to find them. And correct me if I'm wrong, but um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Sorry, I said that again. That's because I was getting something to drink. My throat's really dry. Um, but... The way the last movie ended, it had Jill being controlled by that stupid-ass thing. Yeah, they had to include that, and they brought Jill back for whatever reason. You know, she was, um, without explanation, just removed from the franchise, even though what it was is she had the, um, uh, the character, the uh, person playing Jill had wanted to take time to go make, or to finish up on Eric Han, which was also a shitty movie. She seems to be in a lot of shitty movies. Um... Uh, I think it's like Selena something, or no, I don't know her name, but anyway, um, that you know that's why she wasn't in the the uh, uh, what was it extinction. That's why she wasn't in that one. But they didn't even mention her character at all. It's like she just disappeared from the face of the, her and the little girl just disappeared from the face of the earth. 
Um, I, I think there's like novels or something they wrote that tells the story of what happened to the little girl. Apparently she died. I'm like, oh, well, okay, so much for her. Um, what was the point of her character anyways? I mean, weren't they trying to save her in the second movie? So they saved her, but she died anyway. Okay, well, that was pointless. But, um, yeah, Jill's character mysteriously just reappears, and oh, lo and behold, she's under control by Umbrella. I mean, really, the the guy that's making this, it, it's almost like a, an animated fan fiction is what it feels like. Um, and then the way they're portraying Ada, uh, I don't even remember. I remember not liking I remember reading it and being like, what? That's not Ada. That's just some Chinese chick that just happens to look like Ada. And what made it even better is she's wearing the freaking... Uh, dress that she wore in Resident Evil 4, which I thought was a bad concept, a bad outfit for somebody that's supposed to be like an agent, you know, like working in a hostile environment. Now, if she was just an assassin, like a geisha or something, um, even though she's Chinese, not Japanese, but, you know, if she was just out trying to take out political leaders, okay, I can see her wearing a dress because she wants to appeal to them, but in this case, she's in a zombie-infested world. Why is she wearing a dress? I mean, I, I think it's nothing, it's just done to be a fan service so people can, you know, see her legs and like, ooh, I want to see up there. But it, it, it's it's a very impractical outfit. It's like Resident Evil 3's Jill with the boob tube and the mini skirt and the sweater, which she had tied around her, which, whatever. I, you know, I think Capcom really screwed up with her outfit in that game, but... Um, there's just a lot I see wrong with this movie, and I can't judge it yet because I haven't seen it, but it comes out this Friday. I am going to see it, and like I said, this one is either going to make or break the franchise for me. If this one you know, sucks, expect me just to beat the holy hell out of it, and I will do my utmost to just derail this movie. I, you know, Because Resident Evil is a franchise I've grown up with, and I feel like these movies have just completely destroyed it although it hasn't ruined it for me i don't let things ruin thing other things for me i'm just saying i want when, when i think of a resident Evil movie i think of you know scary zombie survival movies this is just crap pure and simple crap there's no coherency to the plot it's almost been a rinse and repeat for the last three movies um, Alice wakes up, Alice finds other people, Alice and other people try to survive, um, random monsters coming at them that have absolutely no purpose or no explanation for why they exist, and that's the end of it. You know, they're, yeah, they're zombies, but then there's, like, these random monsters that just show up. It's like, uh, wait, what, where did, what is that supposed to be? Where did that come from in, in, like, if you play the games, okay, you know what these monsters are, you've seen them before, like, Afterlife, it had the Ganados in it, and other stuff which I thought was stupid I don't know why they had to include Ganados but their their explanation was and this is like on Wikipedia this isn't mentioned in the movie that they are evolved zombies or some crap like that I'm like okay so when a zombie evolves it has like a little like Venus flytrap thing come out of its mouth I don't get that um, so uh, this movie has had no coherency this movie franchise has had no coherency the first one I thought was yeah, I was like okay it's decent you know it's about what I would expect for a video game movie. And then after that, it just went downhill. And I mean, it went downhill. Um, I don't think I... It's been a while since I've hated a movie as much as I hated Afterlife or Extinction. Apocalypse, I was eh with. I didn't hate it per se, but I didn't particularly care about it. And I and don't get me wrong, I thought it was bad. I just don't think it was horrible. It could have been a lot worse, like... Extinction and Afterlife, I felt like were about as bad as it can get. And then I saw this one pop up. I'm like, oh god, it just got worse. Um, if possible, I'm going to avoid seeing it in 3D because I refuse to pay extra money to see what I feel like will be a shitty movie. You know, in 3D. I think making this movie in 3D was bad because the Afterlife 3D was just garbage. It was. They shot this movie in T or TD, 2D. And then re, you know, they just threw the 3D in, so it was really kind of crappy. It wasn't made to be 3D, and they just threw in like, oh, we, we, you know, the 3D thing, it's still big. Let's let's cash in on it while we can. Oh, thankfully that trend is dying. People are kind of slowing down with their 3D movies, I guess, because people finally came to their senses and realized, you know, these 3D movies are kind of, eh, because every movie has been 3D that I've seen. So, 
yeah, I'm done. Man, I was done. Like, as soon as Avatar came out, that's when it became a big fad. And I'm like, well, it worked for Avatar, but that's because Avatar was made to be 3D. It wasn't recycled or anything like that. Every other movie's just been trying to cash in on it. And the only movies that really seem to be good with the 3D are um, the Step Up movie that came out, I think, earlier this year. I thought that one did well with the uh, C- or CGI, the um, 3D, but that's because it's a dance movie. movie. It can get away with stuff like that. But... Um, just like some of the horror movies that have come out, it's it's been bleh. Like, my bloody Valentine should not have been in 3D. I thought the 3D of that one was bad. And then you have all these action movies and stuff. And I think the only movies that can really pull it off well are like the CGI films, like the Disney Pixar ones or the DreamWorks ones, like Shrek and such. But although I wouldn't want to see Shrek in 3D, anyways. Speaking of which, I, I hope that franchise is dead. I really do because. For me, it, it's like Toy Story. It had its run. It was good. You know, I, I liked it all the way through, and I thought Puss in Boots was good as well. But really, stop. Please, just stop. <laughs> Don't ruin the franchise. Don't milk it until it's dry. That's not how you uh, race the herd, as they would say. But uh, anyway, that's all I wanted to really talk about. Um, so expect to see uh, more movie reviews from me. Um, I think I mentioned it in the uh, CNC um video I just uploaded that I'm single now so I have my own life back to me so um, yeah as far as that goes for any of you that care yes I'm fine I don't care the way it was done I was like okay well the way you did that I shouldn't even care so I don't so you know I'm like okay well let's get back to doing my let's plays let's get back to movie reviews let's get I'm just gonna get back into my hobbies you know live my life I'm single I'm 22 even though YouTube says I'm 23 I don't I don't get that. I, I, I specifically put my birth date as 1990, but for some reason they think I'm 23. Oh, well. It's whatever. But anyway, folks, um, that's all I wanted to touch on. Um, expect to see more CNC Tiberian Dawn and more Sukun 2, Myth 2, and whatever else I decide to do from there. So, till next time.